know, CISOs have, you know, a lot to decide in terms of who they want to partner with. And uh, we feel that uh, we've continued to display the thought leadership along with Gartner in terms of uh, API security, the journey where it's evolving to, and that we continue to be those front runners in terms of making sure that uh, we provide a platform, a solution uh, that ensures uh, the security of, of APIs. Today we have with us Michael Nicosia, co-founder and CEO of Salt Security. Michael, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I appreciate the opportunity. It's my pleasure to host you here today. We cover Salt at a regular basis, but it's great to have you here. Since um, today's primary discussion is going to be around Salt Security API protection platform, which is now available in the CrowdStrike marketplace. But before we dive into that, specific news item i want to talk to you quickly about uh, we were like talking before the interview started the company was created around 2018 so you were born in the cloud native era can you quickly talk about that at in 2018 because security is seen as a solved problem so what are the problem that you saw was still unsolved that you feel like hey we need to solve it which led to creation of solved security yeah it's a great question and you know my business partner, co-founder, CEO, Roy Eliyahu, and I kind of got together before 2018, before we kicked off the, the organization. Uh, and we, we, we knew that as this digital, you know, first economy was starting to explode and you've got microservices that were starting to explode as well, that there was a new threat vector uh, that was forming uh, that obviously, you know, uh, Gartner uh, then solidified that uh, several years ago. Um, and we saw that the current tools like WAF, second generation WAF, API management tools, weren't able uh, to really understand the logic-based potential attacks that were happening at the API level. Uh, and that's really why we kind of started the organization. We, we kind of had this notion that APIs would become ubiquitous. Uh, and, you know, you, you fast forward five years later, and obviously that's, that's happened. And just to, to quickly point out, I mean, we are cloud first. I mean, that's all we, uh, we don't have an on-prem solution. We did that on purpose because obviously as organizations continue to evolve and become more uh, competitive and more uh, kind of digital first, um, we believe that, you know, every organization is going to move into the cloud as, you know, we continue to see on a year-to-year -year basis. And I've also noticed that uh, Salt Security, you folks, focus a lot on API security. Talk a bit about how different is API security, threats related to API versus traditional uh, you know, security and threats. Obviously, there's a lot of security organizations out there. And what we really focus are on APIs. So if you think about any web app or mobile app application in microservices, those specifically um, are related to APIs, how they build software uh, today. So that's what we really focus on is, is really just the API uh, level at this point in time. We want to become super, you know, not only proficient, but, you know, become the API security leader uh, in managing uh, and securing, um, you know, the APIs across any organization, uh, across obviously their entire environment. Now let's talk about, you know, the work SALT is doing which will also lead us to talk about this API protection platform. Uh, talk about uh, the way you have seen evolution of SALT security itself, which led to this uh, new offering, which is now available in the marketplace. As we were thinking, how do we become an organization that's easy to do business with uh, for customers to be able to, you know, not only uh, take a closer look at our solution, our platform, but also be able to, you know, freely and easily you know, purchase our solution. So we looked at obviously all the major marketplaces from AWS to Azure, the GT, uh, GPC. And, you know, obviously we've got a very strategic relationship uh, with CrowdStrike. Uh, they're also an investor of ours. Um, so, you know, if you take a closer look at their 30,000 plus, you know, customers in the entire world, uh, we just wanted to make it very, very simple for them to, uh, to not only take a look at our platform, so when they had questions or when they were, you know, um, excited about API security, it would be really, really easy for them to go into the CrowdStrike store, uh, CrowdStrike store and take a closer look at, 
not only you know the documentation, but you know being able to see a demo, and then obviously as we move forward, uh, and uh, they got excited about our solution, easily being able to procure through a private offering uh, in the uh, CrowdStrike marketplace. And can you also talk about? Uh the importance of partnership, not only with Cloud is, uh, Strike, uh, you can also you know, talk about the expansion of this partnership, but also importance of partnership in the API security space. It's really important for us to be part of the uh, security ecosystem. So if you take a closer look at, you know, obviously CrowdStrike and their XDR uh, solution is, you know, world class. You know, they're also moving into more cloud uh, security um, where they also, you know, you know, kind of move into the the application layer of securing, um, you know, solutions. And, you know, we formed a partnership um, because we obviously extend to those APIs to be able to cover specifically um, some of the uh, attack vectors that, that are associated from an API perspective uh, that goes really, really well with their solution. Um, and we chose CrowdStrike, because there's a lot of similarities from a cultural perspective, from a cloud-first architectural perspective, as well as obviously they're the leaders in the in the marketplace, and we wanted to be affiliated with that since we are the leaders in the API security market. What benefit does it bring, not only for Salt customers users, but also the whole CrowdStrike marketplace user base by bringing it to the marketplace by bringing your platform to the marketplace? The first thing is it's the ease of use to be able to procure, right? And then you've got efficiencies, uh, like procurement efficiencies to be able to, to to move quickly into the procurement process because all of the, you know, legal paperwork has already been established. Um, and then you've got um, crowd credits, you know, that, uh, that uh, CrowdStrike uh, allows uh, their customers to accumulate that they can put in front of the API security offering. So there's a lot of great uh, benefits associated to not only, you know, the, the smoothness, the, the economies of scale, as well as the ease of use to be able to uh, procure through the CrowdStrike uh, marketplace. So those are huge benefits associated, uh, you know, to the, uh, the CrowdStrike customers. And then obviously for us, I mean, you know, think about, you know, the impact that this has, that unique partnership that we have, it allows us to be able to touch a massive market. You know, there are 30,000 plus customers that we can tap into, which is, you know, super beneficial for us. And we're the only APS security vendor that could do that because we're the only ones that have this uh, strategic uh, alliance with them. We talked about the whole evolution of you know security in the cloud. Then we talked about API security, and now we are also talking about making it easier for customers. So we can build tools. There is a saying also, you know, you can bring a horse to the lake but cannot make it drink. So, so can you also talk about when you look at the whole ecosystem or market? the awareness about API security, how much is that? And do you have to actually educate folk that, hey, you know what, you should do that? Or you feel, no, they are very well aware. All we have to bring is the tools to them. It's a great question. If you had asked me that question like three years ago, I would have told you that there's a ton of education that we still needed to do, you know, to talk about the API security landscape and why it was important. Uh, but in today's market, you know, CISOs are super aware of the value of taking a closer look at API security and, and why. And the fact that Gartner continues to say that it's the biggest threat vector uh, in security in itself. So the education is not so much, hey, you know, you need API security. It's more, you know, if I look at my API security journey, where should I start and what does that look like? So those are the discussion points that we are now having versus the actual, you know, kind of um, education that we were doing like three years ago. Since we are talking about the CISOs are aware, uh, of course, over time, we have been talking about a lot of cultural shift, you know, shift left movement, you know, zero trust. We talk about the whole evolution of DexSecOps. Uh, of course, we are not talking about, you know, unicorn developers here, but there are certain fields which are specialized uh, and security is one of those fields. Do you see that organizations, you know, 
CISOs, they are empowered with having a culture within organizations because bringing in tool is also good. Because security nowadays is no longer an afterthought. It's not a problem that you will solve after the code is released. It has to be there from the very beginning. So culture does play a very big role. What are your thoughts on that when it comes to API security? Obviously, CISOs, you know, main focus is making sure that they have the responsibility of securing the entire organization. Um, so I think they want to continue to, to empower themselves to be able to, to make those decisions. Um, and although, you know, there is like this shift left movement, you know, CISOs are very clear that they don't want developers to worry about security. It's still in their kind of domain. Um, so what they're interested in is they're obviously interested in making sure that there's integration points to be able to have that security, you know, in pre-prod and then in runtime. Um, and, and, you know, leveraging existing tools. And that's what we've decided is that, you know, there's a whole bunch of DAS, you know, solutions out there that do a really, really good job on the shift left uh, capabilities of securing pre-prod. So what we've done is we've built integration points with those, you know, large organizations so that uh, we've got that CISO covered on that uh, end of the spectrum, as well as, you know, obviously, as, you know, the more important, which is the runtime protection, which is, you know, the APIs, they're being in use, you know, they're being leveraged by millions of users. Um, obviously, that's the most important part of what they want secured. So that's how kind of we look at uh, kind of the whole realm of that. What are some of the right approaches, best practices to kind of prioritize API security and prevent the breaches so that your company doesn't show up in the news next day? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And it's something that we talk about all the time. And this is what we focus most of our attention because we, we, we look at this API security journey, you know, to reduce your risk uh, associated with any kind of potential vulnerability or breach. So, and there's three components to that journey. We talk about visibility. The first part about is really, you know, understanding my entire organization on all the API endpoints and what kind of sensitive data that I might be uh, having in these uh, uh, APIs. Uh, so that's really kind of step number one. The second part is all about uh, posture governance. Uh, now, a lot of our competitors talk about posture management. We, we've moved past that and into posture governance because it's not only taking a closer look at what, where my risk gaps are within my organization, but it's also how do I, if I have any regulatory or, um, you know, compliance requirements that I have to uh, overcome, we've provided those kinds of, you know, kind of, um, you know, what good looks like in terms of, you know, vertical organizations to provide that governance uh, so that they have a better understanding of how to uh, create these, uh, you know, posture governance and understand these, uh, these, these security gaps that they may have from an API perspective. So that's the second point. The, the third, obviously, which we think is the most important uh, is really, you know, runtime protection. How do you then, once you've discovered where your gaps are and you kind of double click on that, it's all about runtime protection. How do I detect and prevent any type of, you know, vulnerability uh, or potential attack that I may be having? And within that runtime, we obviously close the loop because uh, we have a remediation back to, you know, like a JIRA ticket or a ServiceNow ticket so that uh, you can harden those APIs uh, back to the developer. So it's kind of like a closed 360 degree view of API security that we talk about. What does API security mean for Gen AI or what Gen AI may mean for increasing or improving API security? It's a very important topic and something that, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're taking, you know, deep, um, you know, kind of uh, understanding and how we would help organizations. So the first part of it is obviously we're embedding, you know, uh, LLM uh, solution within our dashboard so that uh, you can identify, you know, attackers. And, you know, if you are unaware or unfamiliar with certain, um, you know, uh, certain definitions, you know, you can quickly just type it in and it's like a chat GPT type of scenario will give you the information. So we're, we're embedding the use of LLM to make it easier for customers to kind of operate our solution, which is super beneficial. But the broader picture, and probably what you're talking about, is how is, you know, the LLM or the uh, generative AI affecting your, uh, you know, kind of the world? 
And if you think about today, there's a, a between 26 to 28 percent of the code that's being generated by AI. Okay, um, so obviously the code is being generated much faster without a lot of controls. So how do you then take a closer look at making sure that you secure those? Because a lot of that is API driven. How do you make sure that you secure those environments as well? So the, we're doing a lot of thinking associated with how we would leverage that and obviously secure organizations moving forward as that becomes more and more um, you know, ongoing and it becomes kind of a bigger portion of how developers are writing code. We did not talk about regulations, laws, the whole political impact. Uh, of course, there is a lot going on. Biden has mentioned they keep coming up with executive order. In Europe, you know, a lot of laws are being passed. Talk a bit about the role impact of regulations, laws on API security. Do you feel that they are needed? Do you feel that they stifle competition or you feel that these regulations, these laws, they are like this compliance, you know, it's not about check mark to start with. It's like we have done everything good. Now we can check mark, tick mark, so that thing. So I want to I want to hear from you what what are your thoughts on that? And you know, uh, yeah, basically. I think if you talk and we talk to CISOs on a daily basis and you talk to uh, CISOs across the world, and I think one of their their kind of sticky points is making sure that they're compliant with some of these regulations. And obviously, as the world continues to evolve and, you know, again, this digital economy becomes more of a reality for us and, and continues to, to, to do so, you know, it's how do I stay compliant with some of these regulatory, um, you know, agencies or regulatory uh, um, standards that are in front of me that I have to check the box. So I think, you know, and, and when you think about, you know, our kind of, um, um, you know, a governance solution, it's all about making sure that you have those, you know, check boxes checked in order for you to not have to worry about uh, not being or being out of compliance. So I think not only are they important to continue to, to run your organization, I think, and they're kind of a nu nuisance uh, as well for CISOs because there's so much of their time is being uh, kind of, you know, pushed into making sure uh, that they not only understand these compliances, but, you know, and regulations, but that they're, you know, compliant to those. So we help them uh, with that. And that's what really posture governance, that next, that second step in our solution is able to provide uh, to create that playbook so that uh, they understand exactly what is needed to be compliant and, and be able to check those boxes. Michael, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only this announcement, but uh, larger API security picture. Thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with your folks again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Look forward to our next conversation.